Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Bits. In today's video, we are going to cover a load of things. I will show you how we can use row and column composable. These things are equivalent to linear layout with different different orientation. But these things will come handy in entire Jetpack Compose development. So please watch this video till the end and I will show you some other interesting thing like how we can use custom offset and how we can put some shadows to make our text composable more beautiful. These things were tricky in XML development but with Jetpack Compose these things can be done very easily. So please stay with me and I will show you all of these things in today's video. You only need to do one thing if you are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and let's start today's video. So we are starting from the same code which we did in our last video. So right now we only have one text composable. Okay so let's say if we want to use more than one text composable our first thought will be that use one another text component right. But we also need some parent to arrange these children in any given orientation. If you are familiar with XML, you know that we have some view group to arrange child like linear layout or relative layout, right? Same way in Jetpack Compose, we have something called column. Okay, column allow us to arrange children in vertical orientation. So if we place some children inside this column composable, it will arrange these two composable inside vertical orientation. But we need to make sure we have this code inside our default preview as well. Because whatever we will have here right inside our default preview it will update inside the right side design. So now you can see it's updated. So instead of write this same code here inside own create and in default preview we can do one thing we can create one more composable and we can name it as main screen and we can add this code inside our main screen composable and we can place this main screen composable here inside our set content and in default preview as well okay now whatever we want to add we can add here and it will reflect okay now let's say we reduce some height little bit and we give the same padding in old direction then it should be fine I think yeah so now we know how we can place column right now if you want to customize this column composable we can do that with the help of modifier modifier is basically available in all of the composable and we can update the style look and feel of any given composable with the help of modifier we can just change the color and maybe fill max width if you want to fill the entire width of the mobile screen we can use this and if you want to fill the entire height of a given device we can use fill max height okay this is like setting match parent for height and width for our screen. You can see that it is taking entire height and width of our given device. And let's say if you want to change the background color of our screen which is right now our column composable. We can use this background and we can use any of these color right. If you want to use black and all this color will automatically update inside our screen. This way we can update our column composable. Now let's make this little bit interactive and I will show you how we can use interactive shadows inside our text composable. Before that let's make these text dynamic. Let's use one another message. Now we can update this string inside our text composable so we can form one string template. Okay. I'm sure that you all are already familiar with code 10 string templates and all and then we can use value as well. Okay that's it yeah now we are going to pass some different value okay and our UI will update like this now the main important topic of this video offset and how we can set shadows inside our text right so to set shadow first of all we need one offset and offset means from which place to which place we want to set shadow I will explain you more but before that let's implement this okay so you will be easily able to understand so first we need to define one shadow offset and we need to use this offset class which is coming out of geometry package so if you see this is coming compose UI geometry and it takes some x and y coordinates value which it will use to set some offset which is kind of we can use anywhere Offset means if you want to highlight something we need to pass some coordinates here. Okay. So let's say we are passing x 4 and we are passing y as 6. Okay. We have one offset now. We need to use here one text style. Now we need to use here a style. 
okay and we need to define one text style and these things this font size and font style we can just take inside this text style now okay we need to add shadow so we are going to use this parameter shadow and inside this we need to use this shadow object and inside this we need to pass the color in which color we need the shadow so let's say we are passing let's say red color okay and then we need to pass the offset which we have already defined and then do we want any blurred radius inside our shadow so let's say we pass 2 okay now just see the magic okay so our text is having some shadow here we have passed red color so it is having red color shadow right and it is taking some value from our offset to set this shadow so let's say I increase this 40 size right so it will take to the right side basically this is pure geometry so it is considering here is the zeroth coordinate right and then if you are passing x value as 40 so it is taking this side it is starting shadow from the right side and if we pass y as 60 so it will just go down like it will take x is 40 here and then shadow is starting from this place right if we just use the negative values it will take up okay this is pure x and y coordinates based how we can set shadow if we set minus 40 right it will take to the left yeah this way we can set the shadows so if we just make it little bit interactive with 4 and 6 dp and we can change any color we like let's say we use green right it's looking beautiful right let's try to pass color also dynamically so we can pass shadow color of color type and we can use this here now we can pass the second parameter which is shadow color and we can use any color let's say we use color yellow and we use color green okay now we are passing the value from our text composable which we are using inside so our text value is also passed as a parameter and then we are passing our shadow as well with the help of parameters right so this way we can customize the shadow okay now let's create one function and in that function we will try to create multiple views dynamically with both row and column so we'll create one function even numbers okay and let's say we want to write this composable in such a way that we have few even numbers inside our UI screen right and we want to do that dynamically so we can just use any Kotlin functionality with our jetpack compose so let's say we write one for each loop okay and we take one number from 0 to or let's say from 2 to 10 okay this is one normal Kotlin for loop and inside this we can use our text component okay we can pass the value which is our number dot to string okay because this function needs one string and two and these values are integers so we are just converting to a string and now we need to pass one shadow color let's say we want to pass one random color each time so we can just use this little trick we can create one color variable and we can use this color okay so basically color class can take few things okay we can pass some RGB value here okay we can pass this red green value and some alpha and it will generate one color for us so basically we need to pass few integer values if you just see we need to pass these integer values so we can use one random class this is Kotlin class and it will generate few integer for us okay we need to give here some value like generate integer between 0 to this value only and then we need to use this value for all kind of things so basically if you just see here we have this red green blue right so we can assign here like we need one value for red and then we need one value for green which will be random again and then for blue as well we will be using this random value 
okay this will be our random color each time then we'll come here and we'll use this color we need to take this color inside our for loop so that every time this loop runs it will generate a new color and we will pass that color to our text component okay so our text component is ready with these value of our randomly created color and these numbers which is coming from our for loop so now let's try to do one thing let's go inside our text component and remove this okay and we'll directly use the value we are passing inside this component which will be passed out of these even numbers okay now let's try to use this inside our main screen so we'll just comment these two and we'll use even numbers okay okay so this way our even numbers are reflecting these are basically even text view each and we are using inside column but we only need even values right so we can add one check that if number is even then only perform this logic and inside jetpack compose see how cool this is we are writing code in kotlin but it is respecting every logic and it is updating the ui as well so right now if i run this on our emulator it will update and it will look like this okay so we have learned how we can use column right row is straightforward and exactly like this if we use row in place of column it will arrange the children in horizontal direction so let me just run our program okay so right now it is taking full width because our text component is having fill max width okay now we can set the width here manually let's say 80 dp and if we run our application again it will show all of the values right 2 4 6 8 and 10 and these colors are coming out of this if we remove it will update okay so this way we can use row and column composable and in the next video i will show you more about jetpack compose so stay tuned so that's it for today's video i hope you enjoy this video and if you are enjoying my content please support my channel by liking my content or maybe sharing it with your friends who are learning android and please don't forget to comment down your favorite part and please subscribe to my channel i will see you in the next video